Are you tired of building flat platform bridges? Would you like to turn this into this? Today, I'm going to show you how you can build a great looking rope bridge using only five types of materials. Greetings Torians, Chaos here. Today's build tip video is going to be showing you how I go about creating rope bridges using only five materials, six if you count the paint. If you guys find the tutorial helpful, be sure to leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more build tips from me, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, please consider turning on notifications. So we're going to start off with uh, using some shade wood fence. And I'm actually going to turn my paint sprayer on because everything in this build is going to be painted brown. I just feel that it gives the rope bridge a little bit more of a rugged look which is uh, rather suiting in my opinion. And on either side of where the bridge is going to be, we're going to place just a pillar to connect the bridge to using this shade wood fence. And then taking the rich mahogany that I have, we're going to place one block with a gap between it and the side of the pitfall and we'll do that on either side now this is the first step of the rope bridge and what we're going to be doing is just creating a kind of bend in the steps because we want to make this look like gravity is affecting it uh, in my opinion rope bridges generally aren't so taut that they are perfectly straight across. So I like to have a little bit of a dip in my rope bridge design so that it feels a little bit more natural. But I don't like it to be so much of a dip that we can't walk up it smoothly. So I'll only do one block change at a time. And here we have the middle. This is probably where the bottom of the bridge is gonna be. Uh, the longer the bridge is, the further down I will make this uh, bottom segment. This is a relatively narrow gap that we need to fill, and so I'm just going to use only a drop of three for the bottom of the rope bridge. Now the edges are a little too uh, angular for the uh, slope that gravity would be exerting on the bridge. So I'm just going to extend it out by placing a block there and a block here, and then raising this edge up one and two, and doing the same on the other side. And the reason I do make the rope bridges symmetrical is that in my mind, uh, gravity would be affecting the rope equally across the entire bridge so it would look uh, much smoother in this sort of fashion and so the next step is to just break out the gaps at the bottom board like this until we have a single space gap between each of these steps of the rich mahogany now with this kind of bridge it's not something made out of platform so you can't just fall through it although there is a bug where, well maybe it's not a bug, it's a hoik feature, where if you're using like Hermes boots and you encounter one of these half blocks, because I am going to slope them all down, you can fall through the gap. Uh, it's not really something we could fix, and if you don't want players to be trapped, you might try making the bridge entirely out of platforms rather than these sloped blocks. So the reason why I'm having these with the hammer is because I want the uh, the look of the rounded step without it being completely round. So you see this is pretty much a circle, but if I go into a half, we got more of a, a natural looking step, but it's rather small. So that's where the rich mahogany platform comes into place. If I place one directly beneath a half block, you'll see that it expands out to the edges to kind of grab on to the block below it. So we're just going to line the bottom parts of these rich mahogany blocks with the rich mahogany platform. 
Now the reason why I use platforms rather than just using another block is because if you use a block it's rather thick. It's uh, quite a bit thicker than using the platform. But if that's to your liking, feel free to do it. So now you'll see we have a bridge where we can walk across smoothly. I don't need to jump um, and I don't need to worry about falling through the gaps. And already it's looking quite a bit better than just a row of platforms straight across the gap. The next step is actually going to be the rope. Personally, I use vine rope painted brown. It just looks a little bit more rugged and a little bit more worn in. And it's just my personal preference but you can use any of the ropes if you'd like. And we're just going to place a row of the vine rope directly over each of the rich mahogany steps. And it's going to drop down one whenever there's a gap that drops down. So the rope bridge is pretty thin at this point. So next, I will add another layer of rope directly on top of it. And this layer is the one that I'm actually going to connect to the pole itself. So anywhere there's a row of the vine rope, we'll just add a second row directly over it. Now you'll notice that the steps are not exactly connected to the rope. So the next thing that we need to do is grab the ebonwood fence and I choose ebonwood because whenever I think of a rope bridge I think that it's going to look rugged which is why I've made all the decisions that I made regarding this design. And ebonwood fence not only looks rugged but it's rather thin but you can use any fence that you'd like. So we're just going to place that exactly where any of the steps are and it'll just visually connect straight up onto the ropes to make the uh, steps look a little bit more actually attached to the rope. Now the only thing left to do to just kind of make this pop and already this looks good enough to use, but I just like to add a little bit more detail to make it look just a little bit, a little bit more uh, older and roughened up. And that's in these gaps, I'm going to just drop some vine. And they're not going to be the same length. This is the only part of the rope bridge that won't be symmetrical. And this is kind of uh, how it, it'll look a little bit better without the symmetry in my opinion. And so we're just dropping these vines out to make it look a little bit more worn. Maybe that it's falling apart or that it was made out of some cheaper materials that haven't aged well. And you just kind of do those at various random lengths and try not to repeat yourself too often and just make sure you change things up. And then once that's done, you have a nice functional rope bridge. I wanted to thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.